This is a hybrid rocket engine. Designed to be taken onto school grounds to be fired as part of a demonstration to kids. Sounds nuts, right? I can tell you, it's not. Designed and created by Products for Industry, this hybrid rocket engine can be taken onto school grounds in order to get kids excited about rockets and the science that lies behind them. The best part of this engine is it fits on the back of a trailer and can be towed to any location. So what makes this all possible? Where was I? And more importantly, what does this black tube of inert plastic have to do with hybrid rocket engines and suitcases? Well, for the last one, you're gonna have to stick around to the end to find out. Hi, I'm Josh Keegan, and welcome to this episode of The Space Down Under, where I shine a light on what's happening in the Australian space industry. If you're new here, please click on the subscribe button. While you're here, take a moment to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Josh Keegan. It's time to grab a cup of coffee, or at least your favorite beverage. Get settled in, it's gonna be a long one. And let's get started. Before we get too much into the guts of this video, I should point out that I have in no way been sponsored by Products for Industry. They just happen to be the company behind the hybrid rocket engine. I also need to introduce someone who has made this all possible. It'd be rude if I didn't. This is Nick. Nick is the general manager of defense and aerospace for Products for Industry and is a self-confessed tinkerer. And he gets to play with some of the coolest machines to create parts for the engine. He's been quietly work, working away, taking the sheer complexity of building rocket engines, breaking it down and simplifying it to get kids interested in not only rockets, but engineering, mass, science, and space. He's created a pressure-fed hybrid engine, taking parts easily found on eBay, or by machining new ones, often found from scraps and offcuts he often finds laying around. Everyone rejects. No, I'm not in the United States of America. In fact, I didn't even have to travel. I was only one suburb over in Brisbane to see the rocket engine and what is commonly just a general industrial area you may find in almost any city around the world. This hybrid engine is not even part of PF5's main business. Products for Industry mainly services all other industrial manufacturers to deliver a wide range of products, including machine automation, sheet metal manufacture, machine upgrades, and much, much more. So if you can make a hybrid rocket engine out of scraps and parts you can find online, and that engine can be fired on school grounds to get kids, and honestly, one that I'm very excited, then how does this all work? A pressure-fed hybrid rocket engine relies on a number of things that are easily accessible from most anywhere. A combustible fuel, in this case, high density, polyethylene or HDPE, oxygen gas mix or oxyacetylene, and an ignition source. To produce high levels of safety, Nick slides the HDPE into an aluminium casing and the HDPE fuel is very, <laughs> very stable. Actual rocket fuel. Wow. Very stable then. <laughs> <laughs> to further increase levels of safety, the engine is housed in a 300 kilogram frame with ballistic shielding, just in case something does go wrong, so it can all be safely contained. One end is capped with a narrow opening to produce high levels of thrust, and the other end is also capped with inlets for the oxyacetylene and the ignition source, which gets it all nice and going. So the bit that does the firing, yep. um, they don't go on yet. This is the main valve for the nitrous oxide. Yep. Uh, open and close. Yep. Uh, using Festo equipment. Yep. This one here is a safety relief valve. Yep. Which is used in case, in essence, it's a fail safe for overpressurization of the system. Yep. We'll go around and have a look yep. at all that. Around the back. So, 90% of what this motor is is actually just about trying to get it started because nitrous oxide systems don't like to get lit. Right, why is uh, that? 
you've basically got very rapidly moving minus 20 degrees Celsius gas that you're yep. trying to set alight. <laughs> and minus 20 degrees, that's a, that's a bit to get lit. Yeah, All right, so it's cool. like trying to, you, you put out fires with minus 20 degrees. Yeah, you don't create one. Exactly. <laughs> so nearly everything here is about trying to light it up. So there's three valves. That's acetylene, oxygen, full flow, oxygen, half flow. The main valve control. All the wireless system with load cells. Yep. And this is the dump valve and fill valve. Wow. So it's got hydraulic, electrical, pneumatic, and solenoid over pneumatic. Wow. There's not much to it, is there? No. Wow. Why is that? <laughs> Why, why, is it, why does everyone think that rockets are so complex? It depends on the type of rocket you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, hybrids are by far one of the easiest ones and also by far one of the safest ones. But we've tried to make this as simple as possible so that high school kids can get involved. Oh, wow. So this is for high school kids. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. And this all fits on the back of, the, back of a nice um, little trailer, doesn't it? Yeah, well. Well, the trailer, yeah. trailer yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. The temperature inside while it's lighting is about 4,000 degrees Celsius. Wow. And remember I said about minus 20 degrees? Yep. That the only way to combat the massive drop in temperature so quickly is to have it what's called heat loading. So very, very, very high temperature. Yep. So the minus 20 degrees can't do anything. And if you get nitrous oxide above 450-ish, I mean, it's probably a better number that everyone's gonna complain about, but let's say 450 degrees, it starts to self-propagate, which means it burns. All oh, right. And then when you've got plastic involved adding fuel, it fuels that energy. When ignited, the HDPE burns from the inside out the same way it does in this transparent rocket engine from Nighthawk in light. You can clearly see how when ignited, the oxygen feeds the flame and is combusting the fuel from the inside out. The PFI hybrid is different. It is slightly more complex without making it too much out of the reach of kids. This here is the injector head. Um, sitting in there, I don't know if you can see that clearly, but there's eight grub screws with holes in them. Yeah, what are they? Uh, the injectors, they're literally the injectors. Oh, okay. So, so nitrous oxide comes in through the back, yep. flows into a spreader and then hits out on those eight injectors and that gasifies internally. Wow. So that's the bit that everyone thinks is complicated, but it's... It's really not. It's not as bad as <laughs> And that's just, that's just the fuel injector for the for the engine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then that's what? the fuel that burns. Yep. So it's HTPE plastic. Yep. And what's HTPE plastic? High density polyethylene. Oh. Okay. Yep. And you can see, clearly been burned. Yeah. A few so, times by the looks of it. And that there is sitting right next to the choke, so the actual go end. Right, and that's been, that's been burnt quite a, quite a few times as well. Yeah, it's just got charcoal carbon sitting in the end of it. Yep. Make it look prettier. We've been told getting to space is hard, really hard. Our gravity combined with the very unforgiving thicker parts of the atmosphere, just where we all live, make it one very big engineering challenge. In the rocket industry, you're attempting to get to low Earth orbit. You have to take a payload and you need to push it around seven kilometers a second, sustaining thrust all the way to the vacuum of space to achieve the delta V you need to maintain orbit without falling back to Earth. This all happens while dealing with upper level winds, which can add like a sledgehammer on the side of your rocket. You also need to work with a range of materials, all with various melting points. Oh, and you need to deal with carbon fiber to ensure that your rocket is efficient as it can be by not adding to the overall mass you need to put into orbit. Not to mention the fuels, the fuels you need to cool to, to achieve the best energy density to thrust ratio. <gasps> Oy. And that's the key difference here. You're talking to kids, you're not actually going to space. In order to get kids excited about the space industry and the science of rockets, 
you need to break it down and make it simple. Very simple. I don't want to make light of it, but everyone says this stuff is supposed to be hard. Yeah. Well, I suppose it, I suppose it would get harder once you start to use different fuel types, like if you're using um, like hypergolic fuels or you're using hydrogen and liquid oxygen and all that sort of stuff. What, what happens then? Do you think it would actually get more complex then because you're using subcooled propellants or do you think it's still the same process, it's just a little bit more complex? It's the difference between writing a short story yep. and writing three epic novels. Okay. It's exactly the same content. Yep. Just a lot more of it in more precise ways. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect sense. That's the point, is that you, I'm doing it to prove it. To prove a point. Yeah, this yeah. is to prove a point. That's what it's for. I mean, there's actually a rocket motor, there's no... Like, yeah, there's no doubt about it, it's a hybrid galactic rocket. fire these. This is what they use to go to orbit. Not orbit, sorry, suborbit. Well, they do actually pass above the Kármán line, but yes, it is suborbital. The NASA recognised Kármán line, which is 80 kilometres. <laughs> the internationally recognised Kármán line is 100 kilometres. Yes. And the reason they scaled that back is their hybrid motor wasn't quite as powerful as it needed to be, from what I understand. Yep. This pro and that's, you know, my opinion of it all. I don't really know. Yep. That's why there's two arms of Virgin. There of, there's Virgin Galactic, then there's Virgin Orbit. And yep. that's where they actually launch a proper fueled rocket from the yep. wing of a 747. And again, this goes back to why aren't, if, if hybrids are so easy, if they sit at the easiest end of the spectrum, why aren't companies launching to orbit using them? Not enough specific impulse? You can always have more specific impulse by having a bigger motor. Yep, true. But the thing is, it's called scalability. Yep. So pressure-fed motors don't scale. Yep. And that's what this is. During filming, Nick discovered a part was missing. So he quickly went to one of the lays to machine a new one and had a replacement very soon. So just a little bit of background. I'm a qualified CNC machinist slash hydraulic fitter slash pneumatic fitter slash <laughs> so pretty much everything. Yeah. Wow. And now you're build, building rocket bits, or rocket components. Well, that's what I do with the, you know, when I want to play around with the hard things. It's on. On? Yep. So what does this have to do with this that I showed earlier? Well, earlier in the video, you actually may remember this safety video. Actual rocket fuel. Wow. Very stable then. <laughs> <laughs> well, this fits into this. All that other hybrid motor fits into a package this big. Yes. That's tiny. So, I'll show you how it works. 
somewhere. And where does the engine exhaust come out of? That one. That one? So it is small. Like, to be fair, it is small. But a lot of that isn't actually to do with safety, it's to do with cost. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of cost, this would actually be quite cost effective. Yeah. It does everything the other one does, it just doesn't cost as much to do it. Wow. And that's the point, is that the kids are actually getting a chance to do it legitimately. A glorified suitcase. Wow, that really is portable. Yeah. So it can sit on a desk, the kids can play with it. They can take it apart. They can play around with it, and that's actually a rocket engine. Yeah. Just don't fire it, because you make people deaf. Yeah, don't fire in proximity. <laughs> so where would you fire something like this if you wanted to fire something like this and, and give it a bit of a test? What would you do? School oval. School oval? Right. And what's the clearance for if you're going to fire it on a school oval? Minimum 50 metres. 50 metres? Wow, that all sounds reasonable. That could fit on the average school oval. This high-density polyethylene is the fuel for the suitcase hybrid rocket engine, which is roughly about a quarter of the size of its bigger sister. And at the time of filming, wasn't quite ready for the show yet. A couple of weeks later, I get a phone call from Nick, and after a little bit of setup, this happens. It turns out Nick has been thinking about this a lot and how it can go just beyond a cool demonstration where high school kids can actually get their hands on a more portable working rocket engine. And I was lucky enough to see the first suitcase hybrid engine firing. The best part of all of this is that Products for Industry has partnered with one of the world's largest aerospace companies, Northrop Grumman, to provide suitcase engines to schools for free. Imagine one of these in every high school or middle school with the large engine demonstrations for primary or elementary schools. You're probably thinking, well, I'm a teacher. This is all very exciting. But how the hell am I going to teach this? Well, Nick too has been thinking about that. And PFI and the University of Southern Queensland have teamed up to create a full curricula that's been written and will be ready for some time in 2020. Want a rocket engine in your school? I'll place a link to the website in the description below. And you can be just like these kids from Sheldon College. If you think the hybrid rocket engine is a great idea, don't forget to leave a comment below. I also have a Patreon page where you can help me out upgrading my video and audio equipment because I'm always trying to bring you the best level of video possible. You can also get exclusive entire sites in the upcoming videos and help me out with scripting and a few fact checks. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as I have a ton of videos coming up, some of which are just nuts. If you work in the Australian space industry, please reach out to me via joshkeegan.com as I'd love to know what you're working on and feature it on the Space Down Under. Thanks very much for watching and remember, stay caffeinated. <laughs>